Hi guys! Today we're going to be learning about an artist whose name is Piet Mondrian. Piet Mondrian is a famous Dutch artist and he's most famous for his abstract art. Abstract art is not meant to look like anything from real life. So it's not meant to look like a person, it's not meant to look like a place or an animal. A lot of times abstract artists will just use colors and shapes and textures to make their paintings or their other art projects. Piet Mondrian made a lot of different types of paintings. However, he was most famous for his paintings that used black lines and had rectangles and squares using the colors white, red, blue, and yellow. Some of you might notice that red, blue, and yellow are our primary colors. And that's exactly why Piet Mondrian liked to use them. Primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, are very important colors because they make almost all other colors. You can't have orange, green, or purple if you don't have red, yellow, and blue. Piet Mondrian's paintings would have black lines and white rectangles or squares, and some of those rectangles and squares would be red, blue, and yellow. They all are very similar, but none of them are exactly the same. He took a big risk when he started making these paintings because back then, the most popular kind of art was art that looked exactly like real life. Painters would try to make paintings of people that looked exactly like that person. However, Piet Mondrian liked abstract art a lot and he wanted to show how art could be beautiful in all sorts of different ways. His big risk paid off because his art became very famous and inspired a lot of different people. Even today, you might see clothing in a store that has his signature red, yellow, and blue squares and rectangles and black lines. Because he's such an inspirational artist from the past, I wanted to do a project with you guys that we could be inspired by him too. And because it's October, which is one of my favorite months because that's when we get to do spooky stuff, I thought we would make these really fun Piet Mondrian inspired spider webs. See, we still have the black lines and the white spaces and the primary colors, and we can make a little spider to go in the top. For this project, you will need paper, and black, red, yellow, and blue markers or crayons or whatever kinds of coloring supplies you have. For your spider, if you have black construction paper and scissors and glue, you can make your spider out of construction paper. Or, if you don't have that, you can just draw your spider on with a black marker or crayon. So go ahead and get your supplies and let's get started. All right, so as we start our project, we're gonna be making our spider web design first. If you have a ruler, it kind of helps with this part, but you don't need one. The first lines we're gonna make are two lines that go from one corner to the other, and then one from this corner to that corner. So I'm gonna use my ruler. I line it up so that I can see this corner and this one down here. I'm gonna hold the ruler still with one hand and then using my marker or whatever supply you have, I make a line. Again, you do not need a ruler for this part. It just helps make the line straight. Now I'm gonna make a line that goes from the other corner to the other corner. All right, I'm not done yet. Now what I want to do is I want to make a straight line that goes across my paper and goes through the middle of the X I just made. So if you have a ruler for this part, line it up so that you're going right through the middle of the X and make a straight line. Now we want to do the same thing but going up and down. So I take my ruler and I line it up going through the middle of the X and I go straight through. And I'm all done with my ruler now. So now we need to make these parts of the spider up. See these curved lines that go through? And we're gonna start by choosing one part of your web. It doesn't really matter which one. And we're gonna make our curved lines. I'm gonna start in this part here. I'm making a curved line, kind of like a little smiley mouth. And I'm gonna make another one and another one. 
And I'm kind of getting cut off here, but there's still a lot of space, so I'll make one more, but this one kind of goes off the edge. So I made four. When I go to my next section, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna make sure that those curved lines connect with the curved lines that I just made. So I'm gonna make one, see how they're connecting, two, connecting, three, connecting, and four, connecting. Also, as they kind of go down, they keep turning a little bit more so that you don't end up having it go way off the page. So I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around, going one section at a time. When you get to this last section, you wanna connect from this one to this one. So make sure that the line you start with here ends up touching the line you made over here. And like here, see how this one goes way off the page? This one's gonna do the same. Now before we start coloring, you can look. If any of your sections have like a big empty space, See, somehow on this side I have this big empty space and this side I don't. You can add an extra curved line or two to just make it filled out more. There, that looks good. I'm gonna put this marker away for right now. And now what I'm going to do is use my primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, to color in random sections of my spider web. I'm not going to color in every single space. Remember, Piet Mondrian didn't do that, so I'm gonna leave some white. One thing you wanna to try to do as well is make sure you don't have two colors right next to each other. So try not to have a bunch of red sections in a row because then you don't really get the effect of the spider web. All right, so I'm all done adding my primary colors, and the last thing is to add my spider. On this original one here, I cut the spider out using black construction paper. However, I know not everybody has that at home, so I'm gonna show you how to draw the spider if you want to do that instead. If you decide to cut it out, you're gonna be cutting out the same shapes that I'm showing you how to draw. So take your black marker, crayon, pencil, whatever you have, and choose a spot for your spider to go. I'm gonna choose down here. Now here's the one thing that you wanna think about. The eyes for the spider, if you want them to be white, will have to be in a white space. So I'm gonna have his head be kinda of right here. I'm gonna start with a circle for the head. I made sure this white space is right in the middle. And then I'm gonna make two circles where the eyes are going to be and put little black dots in there. And then for the body, I'm going to do a big oval, like that. And for the legs, well, something you might notice about this spider is it does not have the right amount of legs. What was I thinking? Your spider has eight legs. So I'm gonna do four legs on one side and I do two lines for each leg so they're bent and four legs on the other side. And now I can fill in the spider, but make sure you don't fill in the whites of the eyes. And I'm all done making my spider. Now, of course, you can add more spiders if you want. To make baby spiders, you could do little circles with four legs on each side like that or a circle with the little bent legs. I kind of like the bent legs better because I think they look more like a spider. But go ahead and be creative, guys. Make your spiders look any sort of way and just have fun making your Piet Mondrian inspired spider drawings. So I hope you guys had fun with this one. Make sure you share it with me in some way because I love seeing your work and I will see you guys next time for our next video. Bye.